Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. 75 points last week, 68 points this week with no hits. Upper 90 Studios is now at 230K in the overall rank with close to 615 total points. Sometimes we live with fear that if we make one mistake, it'll all end in disaster. But really, everything we do is just an experiment. My favorite moments in fantasy started with a see what happens approach. And this week, let's see what happens when I drop the most informed player in the game. It's a massive risk, but so was leaving out Vardy against Fulham. I saw what my competitors were doing. They got rid of Salah. I kept them. There's an adrenaline when I do the opposite of what others are doing, at least when it works. When it backfires, then I cry in the corner like a little baby. Let's get right into it with a Game Week 10 review. 68 points, the average was 44. Big green arrows that cut my rank in half from 470k to 230k. Another clean sheet for Mendy, 6 points, this time against Tottenham. Mendy has more clean sheets than any other goalkeeper, and he's only played in 6 out of the 10 games. 7% ownership overall, he's been a key differential against the popular Emmy Martinez and Alex McCarthy. They've let in 13 goals and 16 goals respectively. Guess how many goals Mendy conceded? 1. Chilwell, 8 points, he's registered a goal, assist, or a clean sheet in every game this season. No defender comes close to Chilwell's average of 8 points per game. I love Dallas, 8 points, Ailing 5 points, leads with back-to-back -back clean sheets, which I didn't expect, but they deserve the points for the hard work and the number of chances they create. Salah, 12 points, captain. He nearly scored 3 minutes in when he got in behind the defense, and he had a similar goal disallowed by VAR for offside. Other than that, he was pretty quiet, and he got subbed early, so I'm going to take those 12 points. Not going to get greedy. That's now 9 out of 10 captain returns for my team this season. Bruno Fernandes, 10 points, vice captain. The first half versus the second half... That's a perfect representation of Manchester United this season. 2-0 down at the break. Great determination to fight back. United, they're a difficult team to assess, but they have a quality player in Fernandez with the ability to change the game at any moment. Jack Grealish, 10 points. He was brilliant. Maximum bonus, but he deserved more than just a goal. Some news coming in that Villa's game against Newcastle could be off this week. If it is, I may be in trouble because I did something. Bamford, 2 points. Everton versus Leeds produced 20 shots in the first half. And it was fun to watch at first, but now I'm starting to get frustrated because it's a pattern of wasted opportunities for Leeds. Calvert-Lewin, Son, and Kane deserve their blanks. In Tottenham's case, you could see they had another gear, and it was still a good result against Chelsea. 2-0 win against Manchester City the week before. Tottenham's current run at the top of the table is longer than in their previous 10 seasons combined. It's a winning mentality, but it has to translate into FPL points. This was the first time at least one of Kane or Son failed to deliver a return since game week one. And I was fortunate that Fulham did an excellent job containing Vardy. Tottenham faced Arsenal, who were beaten 2-1 by Wolves without one of my favorite players, Raul Jimenez, and I hope he makes a quick and full recovery. Here's my watch list. Not many options because I'm happy with the team, except for one glaring weakness, which I've been ignoring all season. I forgot to shut the door. I can hear an airplane. So what's the plan for game week 11? I have two free transfers this week. The original plan was a short-term gamble on Bruno Fernandez game week 9 and game week 10, then Fernandez and Son out for KDB and Ziyech. Now I changed my mind. Son outscored Ziyech by 8 points in the last two games. There's nothing wrong with Ziyech. I just have more experience with Son and a better feel for how many points he will deliver at the end of the season. But I also needed the funds from Son to afford KDB in place of Fernandez. Since I can't swap out Fernandez with KDB directly, I have to find other ways to free up the funds. One idea could be Diogo Jota in place of Salah. Or is there another option? Here's my transfer plan for game week 11. Transfers out Fernandez, Ailing, transfers in KDB, and a 3.8 million defender. Two free transfers, no hit. I'm weighing the risk versus reward, and I'm going for it with two early transfers. Check out my all-star bench. If Aston Villa versus Newcastle is called off, I've already used my free transfers, although I'd probably keep Grealish anyway. There are midweek games in Europe, plus COVID tests. Anything can happen. I'm pushing it right to the edge so I can have this unique combination of players. I think it's worth it because this is my playing style, but it might not be right for anyone else. You can all score big points in different ways. Bruno Fernandez is still a top pick for game week 11, but I'm going to go with KDB, which also gives me a clear captain option. Not only banking on one player to give me the advantage, I'm able to keep Salah, Son, Kane, and other key players with attack potential. The bench is a complete disaster and we're almost a third of the way into the season. The fixture difficulty cheat sheet is almost done. If you subscribe to our email list, keep an eye on your inbox. 
my computer died. I have a new Mac Mini, which is insanely fast for video editing. The problem is some of my older software is no longer compatible. I'm almost there. I'm still working on the team strength algorithm. One of these days, I'm going to give you a full tour of Upper 90 Studios, where all the magic happens with audio and video production. I know some of you want to create FPL content or write music, and I can show you my workflow. Be sure to click the notifications so you don't miss out on anything. It's impossible to fail if your objective is to see what happens. Don't be afraid to try everything. If you're having a rough season, that in itself is a learning experience, but I understand it hurts when you're going through it. When looking back, you might see things in a different way that will make you stronger. Another Friday deadline this week. Don't forget, thank you for all the likes, subscribes, all your positive comments. I wish you big green arrows game week 11. So that's going to be a wrap for today. Stay tuned for my next video. If you like my music, all my songs are free on the website. See the link in the description. U90 Mini League. Good at FPL? Join U90 Mini League for a chance to win. Be sure to follow at Upper90 Studios on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, where you get an inside scoop before YouTube. And if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to like and subscribe and turn on your post notifications because this season is going to be epic. Don't forget to subscribe to our email list and get your free fixture difficulty cheat sheet. Click the fantasy tab at Upper90Studios.com. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Oh, 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 o